In this last movie, on the Steady State Fate Mix Mode and its Expander, we're going to experiment with putting a couple percussion modules to it. The reason I'm doing this is because percussion has a very high transient compared to its steady state sound, so therefore, the saturation on the mix mode should affect just that attack transient, but not necessarily the body of the sound. I've changed the patch around a little bit where I've taken all the oscillators out of the mix, I only have the output from my percussion modules, going through the Mordax data, and into the Moog just used as an output module in this case. I've taken a trigger from the keyboard, and I'm also using these two sliders to set the positive and negative excursion of the saturation when I have the expander switches in the external setting. Right now I have them on internal, so we can use these two controls. I'm just going to set up a steady beat, start playing around with those controls. Here I have a fairly even tone with a little bit of attack transient coming out of the Basimilus Iteritas. Right now I have the mix mode set to clean. I'll move it to saturation. You hear just a slight change in harmonics and these LEDs that indicate clipping behavior start to come on. I'll start bringing down the reference for the positive saturation and you'll hear the sound change. And since attack transients can often have character in just their first half cycle, the negative excursion sounds different. A little bit more of a click to the attack of that sound by clipping just the negative portion. Where the positive section has more of a rubbery distorted sound. I'm going to switch these over to external control voltages. Again, I could use LFOs, I could use envelopes. In this case, I'm using a couple controllers on my keyboard to bring in some more extreme saturation. Let's try a different sound out of the sampled Erica Pico drums. I'm going to trigger one there, take its combined audio output. I initially have just an electronic sound coming out. Again, I can clip its positive or its negative. I can go to a more acoustic sound and still get some change in those transients. Here's something a little bit more Tom-like. Not quite as obvious the noisier sounds, but still there. Let's go back to that acoustic kick. Now remember, when you have a keyboard, you have a control voltage generator. You don't necessarily need to use sliders, envelopes, etc. Since I'm playing an arpeggio, what note the arpeggio is playing outputs different control voltages. So I'm going to borrow my positive voltage right now, instead route it to the keyboard. I'm playing middle C, which is zero volts. Let's go ahead and give it a spread. By using an arpeggio, or for that matter a sequencer, etc., I can program different amounts of saturation on each note even set up patterns if I want. In this case, I probably want an even wider keyboard to get a wider spread, or I can take advantage of the levitate, which can multiply my signals by up to times two to give me that wider spread. Put that into the positive saturation reference. Try to get my cables out of my way. So you can see the display a little bit better. And turn up the levitate. A little bit more variation in the sound. There's more variety to it than just the same processing over and over again. So when I'm looking for a mixer, I don't want it just to change levels and combine them all together. At the very least, I want inversion, and it's even better if they have interesting saturation characteristics. I admit the mix mode has a more subtle character to the saturation than you might expect out of, say, a dedicated fuzz box or other sound destroyer but having control voltage over that amount of saturation does allow you to start creating more subtle variations in your sound, whether you're using an arpeggiator or sequencer to change it, or something like an LFO or a performance controller 